as I started to work on this book, and uh, six M words came into my mind that became the core or the essence of this book. And I'd like to just touch on those for a second. The first thing that he did was his life was all about meaning. In other words, he found his whys. I discovered that Jesus had 14 reasons or meanings that were the reason why he did everything he did and said everything he did. Uh, and in that chapter in this book, we look at our own meanings, how we can find the whys that uh, determine what we do and how we can deepen those whys. When we, when we have significant whys, then we're able to accomplish significant things with our life. The second thing that set him apart were missions. He was mission driven or in Christian vernacular he was purpose driven. Now I was able to find 26 missions that Jesus came to earth to fulfill. 26. We all can name one or two but he actually said that he came here for 26 reasons to, to accomplish 26 different missions and he was so successful that he accomplished all 26 in his lifetime. In fact, most of them he accomplished in three and a half years. And so we look at how he accomplished those missions and how you can become mission driven, how you can find the missions in your life that will really make a difference, not only in your marriage and your parenting, uh, on the job, in the level of fulfillment that you achieve. But Jesus' missions literally flowed right out of his meaning. They were in perfect harmony. The next thing I discovered was a message, that his message, the words that he spoke, the message that he spoke, as well as the message of his life, his actions, all came from his meaning and mission, and they were in perfect harmony. And as a result, there was a power there that was unbelievable. A lot of us today don't have power with other people because our message doesn't conform to our mission or our meaning. We literally do one thing and say another, and that confuses people. They call us hypocrites. Uh, it literally deflates our power for living, but Jesus had all three. The next thing he did that was completely different than any of us was the manner in which he did everything. His manner was in perfect harmony and perfect concert, uh, in perfect concert with his mission, his message, and his meaning so that we can look at Jesus and we see no contradictions. I, he says, love your enemies. Okay, that was part of his message. But then from the cross, we actually see in his manner him actually do that. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The very man that said, love your enemies, as he was dying on the cross, loved the very men who had nailed his hands to that cross. His life was a perfect demonstration in manner. And a lot of times people reject us, not because we don't have a good message or because we aren't on a good mission, but because we simply convey it in the wrong manner. And so we look at the manner in which he did that which he did, and we see some incredible applications to our daily life. I've literally seen relationships, terrible relationships, relationships where people all but hated each other, transformed literally within 24 hours when they begin to discover what Jesus did in terms of manner. Now, I'm not talking about religion in any of this. Remember, Jesus isn't all about religion. In fact, he's not about religion at all. He's all about reality. And that's what this book does, is it shows us the reality of what he came to do, but not as the Son of God, but what he actually did as a human being. Next, we have method the method in which he did everything he did. Once again, it flowed right out of his meaning and mission. It was in concert with his message and his manner. But his method was that that has been used by every super achiever in history, and yet 99% of the population doesn't use the method Jesus used. But everybody that's achieved impossible dreams has used that. So we show you how to use the very method he used to take his message and his meaning from really addressing 12 men and do it in a way that it affected the whole world for 2,000 years. And last but not least, we look at Mission Accomplished. You know, we hear a lot about the Purpose Driven Life, and I love that book. It's a great book. It's one of my favorites. And it's all about purpose or missions. But you know what? Jesus said there's no pat on the backs for, uh, 
for attempting to accomplish a mission. In fact, he had harsh words for people that actually don't fulfill the missions they attempt. And so what's more important than mission attempted is mission accomplished, how you can have a purpose accomplished life instead of a purpose driven life. Now there are certain obstacles that keep us, keep all of us from accomplishing those missions. Uh, we have a divorce rate in this country of 52%. Those are missions abandoned. But Jesus showed us literally how to overcome these incredible obstacles to any mission we want, whether it's on our job, in our career, on a project, in an endeavor. And when we learn how to overcome those obstacles, and it's not hard, they're learnable skills and strategies, then we're able to overcome and literally accomplish the missions that we set out upon. 